Hey YouTube, this is Thinking of Pi. Today, I'll be showing you how to use an accelerometer with your Raspberry Pi. This particular accelerometer incorporates what's called a MEMS system, M-E-M-S, which stands for Micro Electromechanical System. Basically what that means is that the chip has a microscopic mechanical gyroscope embedded directly into it. There's also a microprocessor which will process the motion data and output it via a serial channel to the Raspberry Pi so that we can receive it and do whatever we want with it. I'll be showing you the code here in a second, but let's go take a look at the circuit. I'll show you the processor and the motion sensor and I'll show you how it's put together. So this is our accelerometer. This little chip right here in the middle is where the gyroscope's at. That's where the processor is and everything gets handled right there and outputted through the serial channels right over here. There's a lot of other pins on here. I won't be focusing on those today. We're just going to be worried about the ground, the voltage, SCL, and SDA. Another thing to pay attention to is these markings right here. Those identify the axes. Um, if the unit were to rotate this way, that would be the y-axis, the x-axis, and then right down the middle is the z-axis. So this is going to get plugged in right up here. We've got our 5 volt power, ground, and the two white wires come over here to the I2C pins on the Raspberry. That's all there is to it. I2C makes things very easy, very simple. So the data is already formatted, it gets outputted, and we can do stuff with it. Let's head over to the computer, we'll take a look at the code, and I'll show you how it works. All right, so there's not a lot to the code here. Like I said before, this does use the I2C channel. You want to make sure that's enabled, but because it uses the I2C, everything gets very easy here when it comes to programming. We've got a special library for it here. The model of accelerometer is the MPU6050, so there's a special library for that. We also need to use time. And then we just define a variable here for the sensor itself. Um, for the data, we've got two arrays, one for accelerometer data and one for gyroscope data. And then we just have to initialize the sensor and let it do its work here. We're going to get the acceleration data, we're going to get the gyroscope data, and we're just going to print it out. Um, this first line here is just going to read the three axes and print out the raw data. And then this next line here is going to actually interpret that into more usable information. We're going to be measuring the g-force as well as the rotational data, which will be in degrees per second. So let's run this here. Taking a second here to start up, but there it goes. Now you can see the first line here is the raw data. Doesn't really mean much to us. But down here on the bottom, we've got the X, Y, and Z axes. Um, the Z axis is measuring about 1G because that's the force of gravity. And then we've got the rotational data over here. Not perfect, but it's there. It's accurate enough for us to be able to comprehend the data and actually be able to do something with it. Now I'm going to toss that thing around a little bit, see if we can get some readings out of this. If I turn it on the x-axis here, you can see the x go up to 1, and then the z goes back up to 1. If we turn it this way, you can see the change on the y-axis. So everything's working pretty well there for um, the accelerometer. Now let's look at the gyroscope. I'm going to wiggle this around here. You can see some data there with the rotations. Here, let's stop this here and actually take a look at it. There we go. We can see some of the movement down here as as I was moving it around, right there we've got almost 14 degrees per second on the x-axis, and you can see the changes here with the accelerometer as well. 
So pretty easy to use. There's not a lot to it. Um, but that's all I've got for today, guys. Um, this is also the last video with the Beginners series. Next week, I will be starting a series of videos regarding the Weather Balloon Project. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. The first video next week is actually going to be regarding the Raspberry Pi Sense Hat. It's a very useful bank of sensors. I'm excited to use it. There's a lot of things you can do with it, so you're not going to want to miss it. But until then, guys, I will talk to you next week. Thanks.